Welcome to SWK's video series on Sage 100. This video will provide you tips on the Bank Reconciliation Module. I personally like this module a lot, but there are some circumstances you need to consider for a successful reconciliation. The very first task is to make sure your general ledger daily transaction register is empty. It's no fun trying to reconcile if there are unposted transactions. Next, we'll want to confirm in BankRec that in bank code maintenance, this current balance here equals today's balance in your general ledger. Because once we actually print out the reconciliation report, we want this to be able to calculate the uh, bank ba or the book balance as of our closing date of the period, which would probably be at least several days um, prior to today. So once we've confirmed that uh, our transaction register is empty, our bank code equals, then um, I want to give you a few rules that I follow for successful and easy reconciliations. I make sure that I record all of my cash receipts in cash receipt entry rather than going into bank rec or doing a journal entry. You'll see here I have a thousand dollar transaction that's been created and you'll also note that my customer number is cash. That's a set aside uh, customer number that allows you then to post rather than to an invoice but directly to a general ledger account number. Once I update this, it will update both the bank rec module and my cash balance in general ledger. Another rule that I follow is that for any type of electronic payment, I use manual check entry. I think that this is the most convenient, and what I do is I use the check type wire transfer. Once I put this in, I can come to the Lines tab, and over here you can see how I have CKW as my invoice number, and that's because I had used this little icon over here to go directly to a general ledger account uh, rather than entering in an invoice. So what is this handy for? Well, I like to use it for loan payments that are perhaps taken directly out of my bank account or um, insurance payments. I quite frankly even like to use them uh, for bank fees so that I can keep track of what's going on with my bank in relation to my fees or even for that matter for credit card fees. So there is another way of recording credit card fees, but I, I'm going to, uh, I really do feel that this is the easiest. Also, if you're going to do a bank transfer, I prefer recording those instead of front by a journal entry. I like doing that with a transaction journal, and I have one set up here that will do a transfer between my operating to my payroll account. I have formatted this so that it goes from bank code D to bank code B, which is my payroll. Coming onto the lines, you could see that I have a place that I can uh, enter my uh, transfer amount. And once I update this, it will be reflected in both the bank accounts in my general ledger and both bank accounts in my bank reconciliation module. Uh, let me add that transfer number and let's accept this. And then we're going to go over to the bank reconciliation module. And when I am in Reconcile Bank, you will see that there is an option to add a check. So let's just add check number 111. Um, we'll just uh, say that this is miscellaneous and miscellaneous, miscellaneous payment. And we'll put in $100. It is not cleared, but I am going to select it for general ledger posting. And I will just um, put it to this other receivable account. I won't have any comments. Um, I can put a transfer number if I need to. And then I'm going to say OK. Now, 
That is not sitting out there in general ledger yet. I am going to have to run this bank transfer uh, transaction register for this to be posted to general ledger. So let's take a look at our register. Here we go. Here's our information. Let's exit out of this and update this. And then we're going to print the daily transaction register. And here's my journal entry. So I've taken care of it in both places. And with the techniques that I have used, I am only recording a, a cash transaction once. I'm not going into general ledger, creating a journal entry, and then manually adding it to the bank rec module by using the um, ability here. Uh, I could come in and come down to the bottom over here and do this and add it over here. Um, I prefer to do it where I do it once and then I'm done. So once we have recorded everything and uh, we go then to comparing our transactions to our bank statement, you could see here how I have cleared uh, all of my transactions and it puts a clear date here. Now, I actually, I'm perhaps a little lazy on this. I end up putting the last day of the month, but I have a lot of clients that like to put the actual date of the check, uh, of clearing the checks. And it's actually, when you're looking for a problem um, in your reconciliation, sometimes that's pretty handy to um, have this in the order that it has been cleared. Now, if I was looking for something uh, and I wanted to compare the what I have cleared to what the bank has showing clear, what I'll end up doing is I will just come here, do a little um, uh, a filtering of the columns, if you will, and do a check number. Now, I have changed what this looks like. And you can see that all of my uncleared is at the top, my cleared is at the bottom, and now it is in check number order. And I think a handy little thing is to right click, export this to Excel, and this will go perfectly to Excel. And then I can run a total of all of my cleared checks, and I can compare that to the summary total that my bank statement has. It makes it a little easier to find, am I off on my deposits? Am I off on my checks? That way, I'm not having to do extra checking. Let's exit out of here. I won't save that. And let's come back to this. And let's look at a few other tips that might be helpful. First, you have some icons here that I think um, can be very nice. If I click on this, I can enter a range of checks to be cleared. Uh, clicking on this can reset your rows in case you want to undo the last transaction that you've done. Here's something where I can look for a check number. This can be handy if my check number list is very long. Sometimes it's easier to look for it this way. And uh, here is what we've already talked about. This is, allows me to resort my columns. And if I come over to dep the deposit side and click on a line, I also will see the comment text. Now, once you are, your out of balance is zero, it's time to run your report. A couple tips on running your report. You will want to enter your bank code and you will want to add the ending date of your period. When I preview this, and let's go to the end of the report, we're going to see that it has a calculated book balance. This calculated book balance should agree with my, um, with my general ledger. And once it does, when I exit out, it is now going to ask me if I want to remove the cleared documents from my bank reconciliation module. Clicking yes will clear that out, and then you're ready for your next month's reconciliation. I hope this helps you get more out of your Sage 100 and also encourages you to use the bank reconciliation module. I think you'll like it. Thanks for watching our video.